stock and everything else. The reality of it is, is that the rules are changing as well. And so I want to give you what I simply refer to as, in my opinion, this is something that I believe that should be pushed harder than it's being pushed to you guys, by us, the regulators, and others. Universal home design. All of you know what it is? I'm assuming most of you know what it is. It's designing a home from the outset, able to handle all types of disability problems that may crop up. It's creating a house, in other words, or creating an environment where whether you are mobile and totally functional or whether you're in a wheelchair, you are able to function and survive within that environment, within that design. Universal design is being pushed right across the country. It's being pushed here in Newfoundland and Labrador as well. Okay, let me tell you what some of the regulators like me are saying. We like this. We like this. This whole universal design concept that says, no more doorknobs, let's have latches only. Let's not have somebody who has a hand problem have to try and hold and turn a doorknob. Let's have latches spring-loaded. Let's do that. Let's move them down on the door. Let's see to it that every door is 36 inches wide minimum. Let's see to it that every step is one inch or less. Let's bring in some of the universal design features. Let's make sure that when we're building new homes, that that handrail, I don't care if it's a 25-year-old couple, that that handrail is in the bathroom. And why don't we do the design and do the build so that a sink can exist and a cabinet can come out and a wheelchair can go under it? Why can't we do that in kitchens? Why can't we do it everywhere? According to the Canadian Construction Association, they say that if you actually put universal design into play at the beginning of a construction, you could do it for under $2,500. Now, if you're building a house that's $290,000 and $350,000, I want to tell you right now, 1500 bucks, 2200 bucks ain't going to kill it. What it is going to do, though, long term, is maintain a housing stock with a longer life. And people who are in those homes can stay there longer, and people who need those homes will have some of that available to them to actually get. So I want you as an association to look at what is meant by universal design, and I want you as an association to say, is this something we should embrace? Because federally, federally, the National Building Code, other regulatory documents, you're going to see this stuff coming in down the road. That, no, no, no. You're not going to be able to build a bathroom where the toilet and the tub are that close anymore. That's coming your way. Just be prepared that that's coming your way. Uh, and I want you to know that from a political perspective, the politicians, which would be obvious, the politicians truly support this. They think this is good for a, a, a significant segment uh, of the community. And I want to encourage you to look at it, study it, and where you can and when you're building, embrace it. I know that in condo buildings, of course, is being embraced already.